On the 1st of July 2023, Toby and I went to the Blue Planet Aquarium in Ellesmere Port, Cheshire. The last time I came here was again with Toby on the 28th of December 2018, which marked our official first date, which I remember he'd pushed back one day from his intended visit because my family was waiting on a new refrigerator and my siblings and I had spent the 27th of December 2018 defrosting the old one before we took it out. A blue planet is this kind of splendid, wonderfully dated looking place with an interior that seems mostly unchanged since its opening in 1998. And in order to capture that nostalgic vibe, Toby and I have broken out his family's old Casio Exilim digital camera on which to film. Uh, on texting my sister about this, she told me, I can't believe these things are trendy now. I got so bullied back then for taking pics with mine instead of a smartphone. So therein is the lesson on not being a dick in 2010 to people who don't have a smartphone, because someday the general consensus will once again be that the ancient digicam is actually extremely cool. Now, I recall having been here at Blue Planet, I think once before when I was much younger, probably like around 12 or 13 years old, with a friend of mine and her mum and her grandma. Uh, now, the place itself is this funny little building apparently designed by Manchester-based buttress Fuller Allsop architects to resemble the shape of a crashing wave, which I suppose it sort of kind of does? Anyway, upon entering, Toby and I were pleased to see that the interior appears mostly unchanged, certainly since our last visit together in 2018, but also possibly since Toby's childhood. He had that glow and look on his face of someone experiencing true nostalgia, especially when we were looking up at the big fish, shark and diver sculptures suspended high above us. One change we did notice is the updated logo. It's gone from the wordy one on a blue planet background to a very simple corporate vector style fish, which is cute, but kind of boring. The natural path to take is laid out by the map, starting with northern streams and working your way through the top floor, then down to the bottom, where by then, if like Toby and I, you came at opening time and spent roughly two hours walking around, you're very hungry and ready for lunch at the restaurant. And then when you're full up of pricey kids menu type uh, food items, you can surface back up to the gift shop and then move out to where the pelicans and pirate ship playground are outside. Northern Stream starts you out with the river fish of the world. As you can see, I was feeling very immersed in the theming of the place. I do love a good plaster wall pretending to be ancient river eroded stone. Uh, it was nice to see some artwork done by people from a local school on display here. Good sense of community involvement and evidence of the aquarium's goal to be educational. After all, what's more educational than a team up with a school? We discovered they had a few penny press souvenir machines here. We noticed that they still had coin operated Coca-Cola vending machines about, but I thought it was funny that the penny press has gone like full contactless mode. If I remember right, I feel like back in the day you needed to insert both the penny and then your one pound or one pound 50 or however much payment, but this machine had the pennies already in there because uh, they know that we're moving towards a cashless society, but let it be said here that I think cash is king and must remain a living source of currency for many reasons. Anyway, I pressed a penny, and here's a better look at it. Hello. The the matte painting is nice. I feel like we're in a movie set, you know? The face of the mask, the vibes. The the giraffe catfish. Have you seen the giraffe catfish? Where are we going? Look at those lips. Mm, look at those whiskers. There's the bo body, yaddy, yaddy. Yay! Oh, I could look at this guy all day. Now, in my excitement to look at the fish and other creatures, I paid little attention to the informational plaques. So I can't tell you the names of most of the critters I'm showing you here in glorious, deep fried video quality, but that might be for the best. If I gave you an HD video, you might think, what would be the point of coming here? I've seen everything all in high def capture, but giving you this might encourage you to come here yourself, which I think you should do if you're able. It's definitely a splendid little time capsule of a place. And speaking of capsules, they've got a few of these beaver machines about, the gumball dispensers that you stick a quid in and turn to get a little prize, which invariably shoots out at high speed like it did for Toby here. 
the bounce. Okay. Oh, no. We're going yep. for, going for that. So old, it's stuck. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Genuine shark tooth. Wow. Ah. Wow. Not crisp. <laughs> oh, there's a food one. Oh. Three wow, shots. three. Whoa, wow. okay. Three. Wow, three. Three for a pound, not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Jack Sparrow is here too, marking your descent down into the sort of rock pool section of the building, where we saw one of those fish that we'd recently seen in Alan Pan's video about giving snakes their legs back. You know, the ones with these weird spider legs on the front. We weren't sure what to make of its behavior because it didn't seem to be having a very good time. It's, it's trying to climb out. It's like, hi, I'm evolving. I, I'm trying to evolve. It's trying to evolve. It's evolving right now. It's evolving to be a landfish. This is evolution in action. Look at the little legs. He's got legs. He's going. That's crazy. Toby was also thrilled by blue crustaceans and pointed out this fun blue lobster. Blue? So blue, I don't know. It's jeans blue? Acid wash jeans. Yep. If this was my lobster, I would call him jeans. Be like, how's jeans doing? Jeans is okay. Jeans is covered in a layer of sand. And jeans is looking at the wall. But jeans is okay. He's okay. We're okay. Look at this. Yes. Tropical fish. Beautifully neon. That yellow one is amazing. Look at it. It's so good. I love that yellow one. That yellow one is fantastic. It's really good. It's really, really good. It looks like your crocs. My crocs. Oh, it's like a teeny tiny star in here, it's a clownfish. Oh my god, it's so small! I can't, I can't get a video of it. Well, there's more here. Oh. Look, that's so cool, they're so small. Yeah, you get the idea, there's a small small star there. <laughs> that's clownfish, look at that, it's brushing. Anemones. It's just like a Nemo. Aww. <laughs> That's kind of grumpy, like the face. Yeah, he's grumpy. Go, 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 go. Is it just the one guy? There's two. There's one up here in this corner. Nemo is there. There is. The tropical fish bit here was a highlight for me because I dressed in my customized fish jean jacket in order to fit in more with the scenery. I'd also brought my SpongeBob bag with me, which delighted and amused kids as well as myself. <laughs> Yes. Toby's particular fave are the garden eels, which I remember when we came here on our first date, he was really very keen on and kept thinking about and bringing up. So we've been sure to go on like other visits to aquatic themed locations and be on the lookout for garden eels. They're very funny in this diglet sort of way because he can't see the bottoms of them. Blue Planet has a variety of shows on each day. On our first date, we caught the pelicans talk in the morning. They're called Dalmatian pelicans because of the region they come from, which I guess is the same as the dogs. But this time we managed to catch the shark talk and the feeding by the divers, so that was fun. The employee giving the talk warned against flash photography, but then there was this little kid in the audience with these light up sandals, which periodically started flashing when the kid moved, which was annoying, but I guess you can't really blame the kid because the light up shoes are unbelievably swaggy. Anyway, it was pretty fun watching the feeding. I didn't capture it on the digicam, but there was a moment where the diver was completely swarmed in something they called a feeding tornado. The dude was totally enveloped by hungry fish. I wouldn't have been surprised if when the fish cleared, you just saw bones like in a cartoon, but he was fine because as we know, and as the employee reminded us, sharks don't find humans delicious and they just aren't interested in eating us. Above the theater, there was this little platform where you could peer in and see the top of the big tank and get a behind the scenes peek. Tom and I have been to the Sea Life Aquarium at the Trafford Center here in Manchester. And that was the first time that we got a peek behind the scenes at any kind of um, aquarium when we fed the sea turtles there. So it wasn't like a huge, oh, the magic is ruined situation when we saw this. Anyway, the space was also all painted in this sort of bluey green dentist office vibe kind of color. And Toby felt it was very much giving back rooms. Falls off. 
Then there's the tunnel. This one is particularly fun because it's got like an airport walker later situation going on on the one half and regular unmoving carpet on the other. So you can either be swept along by the mechanized floor or walk for yourself. We chose to be swept along. Hello, sleeping eel. It's very nice with the bubbles and the divers popping up. Yeah. The eel is wiggling. It's nice to see eels not just like popping out of things. She's on the water. Oh, small fish. Look at that. I'm a frenetic sort of a person by nature and I'm rarely chill at all ever, but in the moving tunnel at the aquarium I achieve true zen. I am having a great time and I have no problems. I am but another fish in this little artificial sea. I'm loving it. Here's photo evidence of Toby and I enjoying this tunnel back in 2018, and then here, in 2023. Expressions very much the same, four and a half years apart. And then, after this calming ride, you get thrust into the venom section. Toby's least favourite bit, because it's got the spiders and he's not a fan of spiders. I, however, am a fan of spiders, but if you're also not a fan, then I advise you to skip the next 30 seconds starting now. There was this fun, fake, fuzzy giant one prominently displayed above a couple of the displays, and some more inside of this cylindrical enclosure that if you're small enough, you can crawl inside of to join them. I am scrawny enough to do it, but there were a lot of kids around, so I didn't this time. Otherwise, there was an array of snakes and lizards here, and they mark the last of the critters you can see indoors here at Blue Planet. Blinking blearily into the artificial chandelier light, Toby and I then emerge into the Nautilus kitchen, where we get some lunch. Though not before I lose a couple of rounds of Pong to the computer. I lost again. There are a few arcade games here, I imagine just to keep you amused for that little while longer and also to squeeze a couple extra squids out of you. Squid, as in sounds like quid, as in the slang for pound, as in British pound sterling, the currency here, but also because it's an aquarium and squids are aquatic. You get me? The Nautilus kitchen is themed, I think, like you're in a fancy shipwreck or maybe even a submarine, uh, looking out through the windows at the sea that you've sunk down into the depths of. At least that's the impression I get from the furniture and the decor. There's a lot of subnautic artwork framed on the walls, including 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea movie posters, and then these wonderful art prints of divers fighting krakens and the like. Very fun. Toby and I got a hamburger and a vegan hot dog respectively, and the food was entirely adequate. After that, the last thing to do really was to hit the gift shop. We briefly went outside to look at the pelicans and other little birds around, but then we went in search of more souvenirs. I'm a big fan of sea turtles, as evidenced by my collection of turtle fridge magnets, my large sea turtle plushie, the sea turtle pin badge on the jacket I was wearing during this trip, and also that time that Toby paid for us to feed sea turtles on our fourth first date anniversary. He got me a sea turtle plushie magnet. We also picked up this funny long shark magnet as a birthday gift for my sister, who we bought a large funny long shark plushie for as a gift back in 2018. Some of them are really cute, like this guy, and even, even this, and you know, the fuzzy sharks, but then... Oh. Then there's this! Oh. Who is this evil being? Um, it's Dory from Finding Nemo. Um, is it open? Not really. No, it's not, but it's... <laughs> Look at this face. There's a scream. I'm cute. <laughs> 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 oh, this guy does though. Look at him. What a delight. Gosh, there's so many of them just like looking down. And these guys. Looking down upon them. Would you like oh, 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 oh,
Then we left. We bid goodbye to the suspended sculptures and headed out into the kind of grey, cloudy sunlight of the day. Very pleased with our little nostalgic trip, here I am waving to the building, which cannot wave back, though as we've learned, it's supposed to look like a wave. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, thank you. And you will see me again if there's another one. Goodbye.